Now, because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, I'm going to add another level of this dependent dropdown validation. Now, keep in mind that if you want something more sophisticated when you can do three, four, five, six levels, or maybe you have multiple dropdown validations, I'm going to do an HTML JavaScript video to show how you could do something like that. And you can take that as a base to do something more sophisticated when you can do unlimited levels of dropdowns and all this type of stuff. But for this, I'm going to try to keep it simple because the other way is going to be very complicated. So I'm just going to add another level to this. So for that, I'm going to have to go to this dropdown options and first of all, create the next level. So I'll go here and just add some options here. So this is going to be my third level of validation. I'm going to go ahead and incorporate this in my script. So first we need to make sure when we get the data, we get this column as well, which means I'm going to go here in my C functions. This is where we add a new row. This is where we get the drop down array. And here we start from second row, first column, we get the number of rows and now we have three columns. So that's that. Now, once we get this data from here, now we have to go to our user form. Now, first, before I do anything else, let me go ahead and add the third dropdown. So this is first, second, and now the third one. And this will be my third select box, which will be item type. Now let's go and see what we did so far with our dependent dropdowns, right? So the first thing we did was, so this is where we get the dropdown array and we send it to this, which is this. So this is where we load the thing and we basically just populate the array. So then we have this on change event that triggers this after first dropdown changed, which is this, where we go here and we get this list and we filter to that category. I'm going to keep this simple. I'm just going to copy and paste some code, even if I don't want to do this. So again, as I said, I'm going to do a JavaScript video doing this in much more efficient way. But for this, I'm just going to call it after second drop down changed. That will be my next function. And this time I'm going to get the category, which I'm going to need, but I'm also going to need now the item name to be able to filter by both of these, which is basically this. And the field we're trying to apply this to is the one that's called item type. That's the one I just made. So I'm just going to change this over here to item name here and item name here. Let's just keep this organized. So on this one, after I get the value for the category, and I get the value for the item name. Now I need to, again, filter our main array that will load it as a global variable here on top, array of values, which you're going to have access to. So I'm going to take that and now filter it by two columns. So the first column is going to be this R0, which is going to filter by category. So the second one I'm going to do a second filter at the same time. And that's going to be the column number two, which with zero index is one. And I need that to be equal to whatever value we get as the item name, which is this. 
So now we have the item name and the category. We're going to filter by both and we're going to get a list, which we're going to pass to this function again because that's adding a unique options drop down list. And now the column we need to get this information from for that type is the third column. So that's the index two. And the item is, well, not the item, but the element, which we're getting here is the item type element. Now, all of this, this after second dropdown changed needs to be applied on a change event on that second dropdown. So I'm just going to copy this line, paste it. And instead of this being item category, that's being changed. Now, after this is changed, item name, which is what we called that second ID, we're going to do a change event and we're going to call this after second dropdown changed function. So, so far, I'm going to save this and go check what I did. So, let's just reload this. So, the good news is we got fruits and apples. So if I change this to veggies, that seems to work. I got carrots, onions, potatoes. Good. I do have that part working. And if I go to fruits, I should have these. So now let's pick grapes. And that gives me this option. Now let's select oranges. And that gives me these two options. Let's select bananas. I got these. Uh, apples. So that part is nice, but I expect we're going to have some issues here. So let's see where the issues might be. So what happens when I change this to veggies? Well, that changes to carrots, but this one is still saying red, green, gala. So we probably need to also make sure that this is updating when we change the first dropdown as well. And in addition to that, when I just loaded this form, well, this is populated, this is populated, so it should probably pick apples here or at least give you the list for apples already, but that doesn't happen. So let's go check when this loads. So this whole thing, we already did it on load. Remember when this after sidebar loads that goes to that function? And then we trigger this after dropdown array return function. And after that is returned, that's where this populates. And it also triggers this after first dropdown changed function, which populates the second one. So we probably also just need to trigger after second dropdown changed right after that to fill that up. So let's save this, go back and check this out. So now we got fruits. We got apples and we got this. Let me reload this just to make sure that worked without me actually clicking on anything. Yeah, so that's on load. So that looks good. Now at this point, if I change this to veggies, however, this switch to carrots, but I need to make sure this also updates. So the function that's going to run when we change this item category, that's going to be this which is called after first dropdown change. So if I go and check that after first dropdown changed, this one, what it does, it does what it does. It does all of this stuff that basically updates that dropdown. Now, once that dropdown is updated, which is the second dropdown is being updated, we want to make sure we immediately update the third dropdown too. So we should be able to just run that function again after second dropdown changed. And hopefully that will take care of that part. So let's save it and go back and see what happens. So I got fruits, apples, red. That's so far so good. Now I'm going to change this to veggies and see how it automatically changed to carrot types. And if I go change it to onions, there's one type of onions, potatoes. We got three types. If I go to fruits, 
immediately that's populated with this. If I change it to bananas, we got banana type. If I change it to oranges, we got our orange types. So there it is. So we got the third drop down. We just have to make sure when we click to add this, we actually have it in here someplace. I'm going to add that column. And we need to make sure we also add it to the function that adds this thing to this list. So let's go do that. So that should be in two parts. First, we have to go to function and make sure we accept that new line right here. And I'm going to call that item type. Now we need to make sure we pass that to this function. So I'm going to make sure I save this. Go back to my user form and find the part where we get all of this and send it to our script, which is over here. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to copy this line. And once we get that box item type, we want to make sure we pass that right here as a third argument. And don't forget the comma between each one of these. The last one should not have a comma. So I'm going to do save. Reload this thing. We have all of this. I'm going to do quantity one, some date. Maybe I'll just type delivery notes and some other notes as well. Looks good. Let's add a couple of other lines. That's pretty good too. One more, and that should do it. Now we have three level dependent dropdown. We have this entire thing validated. We have a loading function to load the form. That should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.